Hey, what's going on, people? It's SGZ here from the Spartan Game Zone, and in this video, we'll be ranking all 24 of the Chaos Chamber curses so you know what each of them do and which ones you should try and avoid and which ones you should pick up when you can. There's three types of curses easy, medium, and hard, which grant you varying bonuses to crystal collection. Easy curses grant you 30% more bonus crystals, medium curses grant you 60% more, and hard curses grant you 120% more, with each curse increasing the chance an enemy drops crystals on death by 25%. Just because a curse is in the hard category doesn't mean it is, and I'll be ranking them from the easiest or best curses to pick up, to the most difficult or worst ones you shouldn't. If this video helped you out, I'd appreciate you helping me out by dropping a like. Feel free to subscribe if you'd like to. Or you could even follow me on Twitter, and let's crack into it. We open with the curse you should pick up as often as you can, and that's Critical Connoisseur. It reduces all damage by 50%, but increases critical hit damage by the same amount. This is a fantastic curse, especially for Stabomancers, that you should be praying for every time you go in. Criticals are where we should be aiming anyway, so the 50% boost in damage is great. You're not going to see the negative side of this one that often, especially with the critical hit chance helping you get away with some extra criticals when you maybe shouldn't. The only problem with this is during some boss fights where those critical spots aren't so easy to hit, but in a general sense this curse is going to increase your damage more than even many blessings could, making it the best curse in the game. Moving on to Party Time, which grants a 10% chance to cause a loot explosion each time you kill an enemy with critical hits guaranteeing the loot explode. If you're wondering what a loot explosion is, well, it's an explosion of loot. Basically, when you defeat an enemy, there's a 10% chance that they'll drop some gear along with more gold. And if you got a critical kill, they're guaranteed to explode into all the good stuff. It's a great one to pick up, especially if you're hunting for chaotic and volatile legendaries. Made even better the earlier you get it. Next we have Rend and Rupture, which causes non-boss enemies below 15% total armor, wards, and health to glow blue and explode into health potions if damaged by melee. Rend and Rupture out of all the curses is one of the most useful ones. You'll notice enemies begin to glow blue once you've got them knocking on death's door, and if you knock once more with your sword, they'll be instantly killed and drop a bunch of health bars. If you're taking full advantage of it, you'll find enemies 15% easier to kill overall and be seeing them as walking health potions which can get you out of a lot of trouble. Now to Trust in Magic, which says it reduces your maximum health by 50% but increases your ward by 50% also. Turns out that's not the case, it does do half of what it says and it does reduce your maximum health by 50% but it almost triples your ward. I couldn't work out what math was going on to get it to what it turns into, but just know that this curse will make you considerably harder to kill. To use it effectively, you just need to get into that mindset of protecting your ward, as any lifesteal you get is not going to be filling up a very deep well. Greyborns may see that as a bad thing, but it will increase the total hits you need to take before you end to save your soul. Furthermore, if you're a berserker and are specced into unarmored defense, not only increases your ward, but your health too, turning you into an absolute tank. I'm guessing it's bugged, but if you're looking for the curse of immortality, this is the closest you can get. Next, it's Watch Your Step, which causes encounters to have additional traps. The effect this one has is a little hard to tell, but you will come across more traps in the arenas as you move through. I found there to be between 1 and 3, mostly 2 extra traps per arena. But if you're not looking, then it can be hard to notice. You shouldn't be hampered too much by this one unless you're really accident prone. It's a curse that doesn't have a positive side, but the negatives are very small. Now onto Anarchy, which increases your gun damage by 25%, but also doubles your recoil and weapon spread. Depending on your gun is how much you're going to see the negatives here, as the increased recoil and weapon spread can be quite dramatic. Testing it here, you can see that my normally accurate sub is all over the place, which can make it difficult to hit things, especially at longer ranges or while in Save Your Soul. It definitely forces you to get closer to your enemies than you perhaps normally would, and you need to fight your automatic weapons to hit those crits. 
If you're using semi-automatic or slow firing guns though, you're not going to see much of a difference in terms of recoil, and the extra damage is great in those situations, but outside of that, the reduced accuracy makes me want to pick something else. Next we have Encroaching Darkness, the last of the easy curses. This one reduces your save your soul timer. This one does exactly what it says, reducing your save your soul timer by about 30%, giving you 10 seconds to get a second wind over the typical 15. It's a good one to pick up because if you're playing well, then you'll never see its effects. If you do find yourself going down often, then maybe you should avoid this one, but in general it's a curse that you shouldn't be seeing too much of. Now for Workplace Hazards, a medium curse. This one causes non-boss encounters to have additional hazards. You may be wondering exactly what additional hazards are. Well, with this curse active, the only thing I noticed was the occasional magma balls that would spawn from the sky. You see them appear before they land and they paint an orange target circle on the ground, so you do get fair warning. They don't spawn too often, roughly appear every 4 or so seconds, but you can be hit with a couple of pairs at once. In my time spent with this curse, I never was hit by them, so as far as medium curses go, this one's pretty easy. Now for Magma Breach, another medium curse. This one causes a pool of lava to spawn after dealing or taking damage for a duration while you're not moving. Magma Breach is a curse that, depending on your playstyle, you're going to see more or less than others. It punishes you for standing still, so if you're using the Spirit Rune Ward or Diamond Gauntlet Armor, it's not going to be a good choice. For everyone else in general combat, I doubt you will ever notice it. However, it can make revives difficult as you'll need to move as you do it, but overall there's not much to fear here. Up next, it's Break It Up, another medium curse. This one causes enemy damage and fire rate to be increased by 30% while near other enemies. You can tell when enemies are affected through the glowing red aura surrounding them, and you'll see it affect close ranged enemies more than others as they often hunt in a pack. Increased damage is the main one to watch for as only a few enemies can take advantage of the add fire rate. It does make getting close a little riskier, but you'll often still survive that first hit, which causes this curse to have less of an effect. Moving on to Trapped Hearts, which causes enemies to have a chance to spawn a spinner trap when hit. Spinner traps emit elemental beams and when destroyed apparently cause significant damage. This is the only curse that activates on hit, spawning a spinner trap with a random element. They last for a long time, 15 seconds, but can be killed, although won't grant a death save. The damage they deal is decent, but is limited to close range. The spinners are relatively easy to avoid, even in close quarters. Jumping works well, and when they spawn on uneven surfaces, the beam won't be as much of a threat. If you're under leveled or under geared like I am here, more spinners will spawn but even then they're not worth worrying about. Next up is Outdamned D.O.T, a hard curse which causes status effect damage against enemies to be reduced by 80%. This was the last curse I received and honestly I'm not sure why it's in the hard category. It forces you to deal damage with bullets, spells or melee, and not the effect that comes after which for a lot of us is how we deal damage anyway. However, if you're focused on applying status effects and that's where the majority of your damage comes from, you'll want to avoid it. For most of us though, it just means you need to finish the job yourself rather than letting a status effect do it, which isn't all that hard to accomplish. Moving on to Healing Vengeance, another hard curse. Killing an enemy has a chance to release a healing soul, it will heal the first enemy it touches, and they drop health potions when you defeat them. The healing souls that spawn move really slowly and don't have much health, making it pretty easy to kill them in time. I also noticed that they have the one enemy they are watching out for and are locked onto until they die. It's a curse that doesn't have an effect until it does, if that makes sense, and it's pretty easy to stop it from having one. Now for Searing Tether, which causes nearby enemies to be attached by a damaging elemental beam. Searing Tether is a curse that you'll only notice when the odds are stacked against you. The difficulty compounds as the number of enemies grow, but in general, you're not going to be facing much enemies at once, so you can comfortably avoid its effects. Those effects are a big chunk cut from your health bar whenever you get clotheslined by those elemental beams. Enemies need to be close to link together, and I had to go searching to get hit. However, in some boss fights where the enemy count is huge, 
It's absolutely insane, turning the whole arena into a minefield, so that's something to keep in mind. Moving on to Nullify, a medium curse, which causes enemies to gain 3% damage reduction against the type of damage received for 3 seconds, and stacks 20 times. This one is a little hard to judge, but the more you shoot at enemies with a particular element, the less damage they'll take. That only lasts for 3 seconds after the time they were last hit, and maxes out at 60% reduced damage. It can be annoying for those like a Berserker focused on Frost or a Graveborn focused on Dark Magic. It all comes down to how quickly you defeat enemies, it only matters during concentrated fire or low damage high fire rate weapons. If you kill enemies quickly then it's not going to be a problem, but if you take a while then it's just going to compound that issue. You will see it regardless during boss fights where it can slow you down, but leading up to it you shouldn't be hampered all that much. Up next is Buff Buddies, a hard curse that causes enemies to have a chance to spawn with the Buff Buddies supporting them. Buff Buddies are whatever your enemies need, they're like a wingman when you're out on town trying to find a McDonald's where the McFlurry machine isn't broken. They float alongside them, regenerating any health that's missing. The healing they provide is relative to the health of the enemy, with the bigger the health bar, the greater the healing. They can be killed, although it isn't necessary, but they will seek out and support another enemy if their subject died. It's a good idea to defeat them while you can, because you don't want them hiding behind Bernadette and making her impossible to kill. It took me like 3 minutes to notice. Now for the other buddies, Bulwark Buddies, which essentially do the same thing but grant your enemies immunity until they're destroyed. Bulwark Buddies, unlike Buff Buddies, are a support that you'll definitely need to kill, because if you don't, you won't be able to kill the enemy they're supporting. You can tell an enemy is immune because they'll be glowing white, and of course you can't kill them. The spawn rate is rather low as with most of the curses, and essentially just means you'll need to kill a few more things each round as you go through. Moving on to Spectral Vengeance, which grants a chance to release a spectre after you kill an enemy. That spectre will follow you, and if it touches you, you'll instantly enter Save Your Soul. I don't know why, but I like picking up this curse, mainly because I like the haunting presence of death, especially when it's chasing down my teammates, I just feel it's worth those crystals. Basically on kill there's a chance for a demon spectre to spawn from a red cloud above the enemy you defeated. It will hunt you down in silence while playing a game of insta death tag. It does appear on your map as a red marker, which is good, but sometimes even that won't save you. The main thing for this one is being constantly aware of your surroundings and what happens to your target after death. If you can do that, then this curse won't be a problem. Moving on to Frozen Vengeance, which causes a chance for a frost buddy to be released from the enemy you defeated, which constantly release frost novas and are slowed when taking damage. Frozen Vengeance is definitely the most annoying of all the curses that you can run into during your runs through the Chaos Chamber. After defeating an enemy, there's around a 25% chance for a freezing friend to appear, which follows you everywhere, constantly releasing damaging Frost Novas. They not only damage you, but slow you down, and honestly, are just incredibly annoying. The saving grace here is that they do despawn over time, but you can shortcut that by draining their electric health bar. Although this curse might not be objectively the worst, I would pick almost anything else before it, because those frost buddies are no buddies of mine. Time now for Nasty Spell, which causes enemies to drop elemental pools when their armor, wards, or health are depleted. This is a medium curse that can get incredibly nasty depending on the amount of enemies you're fighting and how many health bars they have. For each health bar that's drained, elemental orbs will burst from the enemy you defeated and create four surrounding puddles. Red health results in fire puddles, bone means frost, armor means corrosive, and shock is electric. By the time you're done, the floor won't just be lava, but it'll be frozen, full of acid, and have high voltage coursing through it. And with the amount of damage elemental puddles and the likes deal, you're pretty much gonna insta-die if your pinky toe goes in it. It can also get messy in boss arenas as all the adds come in and die, making the boss fight even harder. This is one curse that you'll need to literally be on your toes for, and gets more difficult to counter the more enemies you kill. 
Now for elemental overflow which causes enemies to be infused with one element per encounter. Infused enemies are immune to that type of damage and release a nova when killed. And those elements change per round. It's a real hindrance depending on the element you're faced with, it's a real roll of the dice not getting frost if you're a berserker or dark magic for a graveborn but it happens and when it does you'll need to change your game plan to get through it. It will affect how you approach each chamber more than any other curse which makes it one of the worst curses to have bestowed upon you. Now for stay back, this one causes enemies to attach a damaging elemental beam to you when you're close enough in range. This curse is definitely the most debilitating of them all. Getting too close to an enemy will see your health steadily drain away. It practically prevents your ward from ever recharging and if you're not careful will eventually down you. If you're up against close ranged enemies then you'll see no respite through the entire encounter and it can be incredibly annoying during boss fights when the lesser enemies won't leave you alone. It'll affect close range builds the most, forcing you to deal damage outside of your comfort zone and while active you'll constantly need to watch your back and keep your distance. Next up is Toothless, one of the hardest curses in the game which reduces your critical hit damage by a whopping 75%. Toothless is essentially a big old nerf to your damage. It takes away your ability to deal high damage through criticals and forces you to the mediocrity of non-critical hits. You'll be punished for hitting good shots and should instead aim elsewhere to see the highest damage numbers. You can avoid many of the other curses by changing playstyles or being aware of their effects, but there's no avoiding this one which makes it an incredibly good curse and therefore one you should never pick up. Now for the number one curse that you should avoid at all costs and that is Rogue Light where you no longer enter save your soul before dying, you just enter die. However all enemies will drop health potions upon death. Roguelite is not a nice curse and it's not even the no save your soul thing, well it is but it's what leads up to that which makes it so much worse than it could be. The reason this one is so bad is because it stops you from surviving those ghost hits, any barrel that randomly explodes in your face or when you step on elemental water will see you lose a life immediately when you'd normally survive. It completely eliminates the ability to make mistakes and will have you paying the full price for those moments that come out of nowhere which are impossible to avoid. And that's why I feel that this is one curse you definitely should not pick up. So that's all for this video, I hope you enjoyed it and learned about all the Chaos Chamber curses and which ones you should go for and which ones you shouldn't. If you did consider dropping a like or subscribing and I'll catch you in the next one.